Welcome back to Ozarks Fox. Hispanic Heritage Month is observed in the United States every year from September 15th to October 15th. According to the Library of Congress, the goal is to celebrate the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. It started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson, and then it expanded to a whole month by President Ronald Reagan in 1980. Now, universities, organizations, and cities celebrated across the nation, and Missouri State here in Springfield is having several events throughout the month to celebrate, and we have joining us now to tell us about these events, Dr. Judith Martinez and Assistant, Assistant Professor and Joanna Mendez, Study Away Advisor. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. So first, I want to start by talking about the events you have going on at MSU for Hispanic Heritage Month. What all is happening? Give me, I know it's a lot of events, so a couple of the examples. Sure. Um, so we had the carnival, which it has already um, been hosted, and it's, it was an event where our students and also community members uh, got together and just f uh, showcase dances. We have poetry, uh, performances of, of different kinds, representing just the diversity of the Latinx or the Latino hi Hispanic culture. Um, we also had conversations like mini seminars where we were discussing from appropriation to appreciation and just a concept of how do we transition from appropriating certain uh, traditions or culture ideas into um, more of an appreciation and knowing the history behind that. I saw some of the events and some of them were titled appropriation versus appreciation and I thought that was so clever and I thought it was just exactly what the issue is sometimes when we talk about Halloween costumes for example or celebrating a holiday that people might not understand exactly what it is. Can you talk to me a little bit more about the difference between appropriation versus appreciation when we are talking about other cultures? So like Coco, the movie, uh, really brought up the history of the dead of uh, Dia de los Muertos, right, from the Mexican uh, history and traditions. And so then individuals find that fascinating. And then you see the next year Halloween costumes are uh, the sign after some of the characters and the history behind that. But as much as Coco, I love, my kids love Coco, as much as that provides a venue for conversation about history and traditions, sometimes it uh, fails to really uh, provide some meaning behind that and they really understand that for uh, in Mexico exclusively specifically that tradition goes back centuries mm -hmm. uh, before even the Spaniards arrive uh, to Mexico and so understanding that so appreciation I believe is not only we welcome people trying to celebrate. We welcome people trying to integrate some of that, but understanding what it is. And sometimes we need to take a step back and say, maybe this is something I just need to appreciate and not so much participate. Do you have anything to add to that? What is your <coughs> view of appropriation versus appreciation? I think the difference would be to value, to understand, to value somebody else's culture, to celebrate it. Um, to appreciate what they're bringing into the society, we call it the melting pot, to appreciate uh, what other people are bringing and how that uh, enriches who we are as a society. So participate in a sense is in a form of a community and in a way um, be proud of who we are too. I mean, I love the Heritage Month, especially because as a professor, I see my students, especially Hispanic or Latino students or Latinx students, I see them uh, celebrating who they are. And I'm very mm -hmm. proud when they are proud to see the value of them bringing into the community uh, their, yeah. their wealth, you know. Both of you mentioned Hispanic, Latino, and Latinx. <laughs> Help us understand, help our audience understand the difference between Hispanic and Latino, which has been a discussion for years now, and now, more recently, the term Latinx came into play. Help us understand the difference between those three. Well, first of all, the disclaimer would be that it's a complex topic. Yes. We don't want to bore anybody, <laughs> but uh, just in a nutshell, I mean, uh, Hispanic would be, if you think of somebody who speaks Spanish, uh, that's the easiest way to approach it. Uh, somebody from Spanish um, or whose family speaks Spanish. You know, uh, my kids would be Hispanics. I would consider myself Hispanic too. And Latino would maybe have to do more with the region, somebody from Latin America. 
this, uh, so it would be Latino, Latina. The thing with the language in Spanish is that we have the gender. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's female, if you remember your Spanish classes, female, uh, male, uh, O, A, you know, the ending. Uh, so the X comes to replace that, that um, to include everybody, to get away from the binary of the language. So that's what they're fighting for. That's, that's the space that is being reclaimed. And I think that's very valid. I thought how you put it at first is normally how I would explain it to being from Brazil. I always say I wouldn't technically consider myself Hispanic, mm -hmm. but I'm not offended. And I understand right. that people sometimes don't know the difference. And a lot of times if you're filling out a form, for example, it's Hispanic slash Latino. But mm -hmm. being from Brazil, I would consider myself Latina, Latina, but not Hispanic. And someone from Spain, for example, would be mm -hmm. Hispanic, but not Latino. So that's usually the example I'm used to. Now, lastly, what is the importance of celebrating Hispanic culture here in Springfield and in the Ozarks? I know you are on a university campus and that there's always a little bit more diversity on a university campus, but as a community as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it was really because I wanted to be intentional, intentional in educating uh, our current students, our population, but also the community about the value of having a diverse uh, community. And, and Springfield, I think, just recently celebrated the first diversity culture. I, I failed to remember the name. but um, But I think it's embracing the idea that as Latinos, either student, faculty, staff, community member, we can all be intentional on helping each other understand our differences and our commonalities and uh, celebrate uh, what makes us different, but also what makes us part of the Ozarks. All right, well, Dr. Judith Martinez, Joanna Mendez, thank you all so much for being thank here. You. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. We'll be right back with more right here on Ozarks Fox.